Good afternoon. My name is Kira, and I'm a friend of Rupert. This is the part where you're supposed to cheer. Yay! <laughs> okay, wait, that's not right. Well, I mean, it is right. I am a friend of Rupert. Rupert the rabbit, that is. Okay, he's furry, brown, young, and it seems his lessons never end. But this is the wrong speech. Usually, I do workshops with children. This is not. So you caught me. I'm goofing around. I'm supposed to be here to tell you about my life as an elemental witch. So let's start by asking, just what do you suppose the witch is? It's a rhetorical question. I'm going to tell you. you. Well, you might say it's someone who does magic, or someone who is a pagan, or has green skin and warts, or maybe it's a woman with a black cat, or someone who is, I don't know, out of their mind, right? Okay. You might say an awful lot of things. But one doesn't have to be a witch in order to believe they can do magic. Nope. Have any of you ever prayed for something and saw it come true? Well, maybe that's magic. Have you ever witnessed something happening for which you had no explanation? Maybe that's magic. How about if we say that someone who is a pagan is a witch? Nope. That's not always right either. You might worship the Christian God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and still consider yourself a witch. After all, pagans and Wiccans believe in and serve all kinds of different gods and goddesses. Why not the Christian pantheon? Some will tell you that all pagans are polytheists, so anyone who is a polytheist must be a witch. But that's not true either. Not all pagans are polytheists, and not all pagans are witches. So I'll ask you again, what is a witch? Well, let me ask you another question. What is an artist, a writer, a singer? How do you know you are one? How about uh, some anyone who does any kind of crafting? Do you have to sell something in order to consider yourself comfortably as a writer, a singer, an artist? How about a sculptor? Do you have to sculpt? Do you have to sell a sculpture? A sculpture before you actually feel that you are there, that you are one? I guess it depends on you, doesn't it? Someone could be writing for decades and still not consider themselves a writer because they haven't sold anything. On the other hand, someone might write one song and, can, and never sell another one but still consider themselves a songwriter. So let me say this about that. It doesn't matter. In fact, I could spend all of our time here together today and a lot more simply explaining what a witch is and is not. So how about for the purposes of this class, we assume I am a witch because I say so. Can any of you dispute it? Can any of you disprove it? Must I demonstrate my supernatural powers in order to convince you? And if I do, will you burn me at the stake? Will you believe me? I'm a witch because I say I am. It's really that simple. I was born and raised a Catholic with all the appropriate ceremonies and such, the baptism, confession, con confirmation, etc., etc. In fact, I was more than 40 years old before I even had any idea what a pagan was, other than what Father Joe said. At the time, I was teaching religious education to Catholic children and had been for four years. Four years. I was ironing for the church, doing readings at mass. I was even a Eucharistic minister, giving out the, body, the, the blood and body of Jesus Christ during mass. Mine is not necessarily a unique story, except maybe for the teaching the children part. But the truth of the matter is that most of my friends are witches. Some are druids, some are heathens, some are Wiccans. And yes, there are differences between Wiccans and Pagans, although we're not going to go into that today. When I identify myself as a witch, what it means to me is that I wholeheartedly believe I'm able to make physical changes in the world around me through the focus of my own intentions. And in fact, I don't just believe this to be so, I know this to be the truth. I may believe it will rain tomorrow, but I know I'm wearing shoes right now. Okay? There's a big difference between knowing and believing. When I fail to do something I set out to do through magic, I don't say something along the lines of, I guess it wasn't meant to be. I do not. Many do. I do not. This is my personal edict and belief, and not necessarily the same belief as every witch. What I think instead is that I simply have not yet developed the skill to bring about the change I want to see. For example, one of the many things I do and am is the author of a series of children's books written specifically for pagan children. These books feature Rupert the Rabbit, okay? So now you may understand why I am a friend of Rupert. The point I'm making here, though, is that I have a professional artist who is Rupert's illustrator. Her name is Tanya Osborne, Tanya Bennington Osborne. When I submitted the first three stories to 
Schiffer Publishing in the hope of a publishing contract, I had to draw sketches. See, all the stories rhyme, but I don't write poems. The stories just happen to rhyme, and I can't help it. It's just the way it comes out. It was very important to me that the publisher not see the stories as poems. What Tanya and I did together worked. It was awesome. It still is. We have two titles which have been released along with an activity book. Woohoo! But Rupert's Tales, The Wheel of the Year. The, there are four stories in each of the hardcovers which tell the, about the eight Sabbaths or seasonal holidays that pagans and Wiccans celebrate throughout the Wheel of the Year. Okay? I already had the sketches for the first eight stories when I sent them to Schiffer, which ended up in these two books, and then I sent them on to Tanya. So let's fast forward a bit. And now I've written four more stories for our third hardcover about reducing, reusing, and recycling. Rupert's Tales, Rupert Helps Clean Up, which is going to be out in fall of 2012. Tanya asked me, so where's the sketches? I said, what sketches? I got to do sketches now? I do words. You do pictures. But she wants to see what it is that I do, what is in my mind, instead of just reading the words. So now she's telling me to do sketches for all of our stories together. But I'm no artist. I just do pencil drawings, kind of like, you know, stick figures. She's the one who creates the incredible illustrations for our books, bringing the stories to life for everyone to see. But what if I had to be able to, to do the illustrations myself in order to get published? Well, I wouldn't have a series of published books under my belt, I can tell you that right now, with more on the way. Of course, you haven't seen my sketches, so you don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm here to tell you I do not have the skills and talents that Tanya does where painting is concerned nor do I have the skills and talents to manifest everything in the world I would like to have. But I am working on it. I've heard many people say, if you're a witch, then why don't you win the lottery? Well, there could be an awful lot of reasons for that. The first of which is what I just told you. I don't have the skills and talents necessary to manifest that level of prosperity in my life yet. But you may believe I am working on it. On the other hand, I have everything I could have ever wanted and wished for in my life. Absolutely everything. I am a successfully published author. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I go to Disney at least once a month. And not one penny of what our furry friend here brings in goes to putting a roof over my head or food on the table. This man <laughs> uh, is responsible for all those things and so much more. So let me take a moment to introduce my husband to you. Class, this is Randy. Randy, this is the class. Say hi. Hi, class. <laughs> Randy is an elemental witch too. I know I put because I put him through the initiation. That's right. Men are witches too, not just women. That's what you really want to hear about today, isn't it? How did I become an elemental witch, and what the heck does that mean? There are many different kinds of witches. Um, many, uh, much like I suppose, like there are many different kind of motorcycle riders. Okay. Uh, how about hairdressers, bankers, bakers? Parents, students, pigeonholes are a little hard to come by, although there are some generalities. I suppose the first thing you should really understand is that witchcraft is not a religion, it is a practice. To be an elemental witch means that you honor and work with the elements, air, fire, water, and earth. Some will include spirit in that listing, although I do not personally feel spirit should be classified as an element. I told you earlier that I am a witch because I say I am, but even that isn't how some people feel witches are made or come to be. But I'm not here to tell you about how they feel or how they practice or what they believe. I'm here to tell you about my own experiences. How we, Randy and I, became elemental witches is that we each went through an initiation process. It takes a year and a day and includes a dedication ceremony or ritual if you like, as well as another ritual once you've completed the initiation. Each initiation is very much a personal experience and is always, always life-changing. If you ever ask anyone who's been through one, the first thing they'll say is, <laughs> because it is life-changing. There are specific tasks which you accomplish each quarter that you focus your attention on one of the elements. Generally speaking, air is first when you speak with any pagan. Generally speaking, air is associated with many things, including the compass point of east. East for new beginnings because that's where the sun rises. Then you move on to fire. Fire is associated with the south and the color red and the realm of action. Water is next, is associated with the west as well as the realm of intuition and emotions. Earth is last and is associated with north, health, and abundance. There are many, many other items, thoughts, and things which pagans, as a general rule, associate with the elements. 
Paganism is a nature-based faith system, or religion if you like. Many pagans don't necessarily like the term religion, though, because the word is associated with control, whereas faith is associated with one's own personal spiritual path and choices. As an elemental witch, I'm constantly aware of the elements and their impact on my life. The more you learn, the more you realize you have more to learn. And you learn how amazingly everything is connected to everything else. My own transformation from a person who was learning about the pagan path to Elemental Witch started with uh, a DVD called The Illuminated Chakras. And that just absolutely opened everything else up to me. I wanted to learn more, to know more, to be more. I've learned bits and pieces of numerology, the runes, astrology, tarot, the chakras, and about a year or so ago, I completed my third Reiki attunement, so I am a Reiki practitioner as well. But no matter what it is you study, what you learn, what you feel or know, or how you practice, paganism generally boils down to service and personal responsibility. Service and personal responsibility. Very often, when people hear the word pagan these days, they think of Wicca or Wiccans because Wicca is actually a nationally recognized religion, okay, worldwide recognized religion, and has been in the news quite a bit these past few years or so. There continues to be all kinds of misperceptions about what pagans and Wiccans do, but one thing even many in mainstream religions have heard is the Wiccan read and the infamous line, and it harm none, do as you will. If you are a Wiccan, this is a part of your religion. It is a tenet of your faith. That does not mean, however, that each and every Wiccan adheres to this edict any more than, say, every single Catholic on the face of the earth adheres to the edict that they cannot use birth control. The more you learn about paganism, the more you understand that there are no edicts and no dogma. Almost no rules. Almost. Courtesy and kindness are expectations, and there are certain behaviors expected when you are in sacred space. Let's talk about sacred space for just a moment. There are so very many things I would like to explain to you, but since our time is limited here today, I will tell you that when we cast a circle, and that circle with a capital C because it is sacred, most pagans and Wiccans will generally call upon the spirits of elements, of the elements, air, fire, water, and earth, to stand guard between the sacred and the mundane. The sacred is the space with the, of the circle, and it doesn't just the circle on the ground, it's a bubble, it's a sphere. That is the sacred space. And then outside is mon the mundane. Everything outside that sacred circle, bubble, sphere, is uh, the mundane. And then we invite God and Goddess to be with us. The reasons we cast circles are many. In the elemental witchcraft tradition, we do them for seasonal holidays, rites of passage, and to perform magic. The way we perform rituals and ceremonies is truly as endless as your imagination. What is not endless, however, is our time together today. So before I open up for any questions you may have, I'd like to go back to the service comment I made. As a pagan, I feel compelled to help make the world a better place. Would I, if I was still a Catholic? I cannot say, because I'm no longer a Christian, and I'm no longer that person. What I do know is that many who are helping to create a more sound and balanced world environment are pagans. Not all, of course. But here as friends of Rupert have taken our furry friend Rupert out of the pages and illustrations of the books and have become an official Pasco County Adopter Road crew for the past two years. Four times a year we gather together and clean the 2.3 miles of our assigned roadway. This is what we do. We generally seek out opportunities to serve our communities in ways we find meaningful. In fact, I started a volunteer group called The Hands of the Goddess. It is my hope to grow this group into a more dynamic organization, but at the moment we help to organize various events throughout the year. I envision a time when we will, as a group of pagans, volunteer to help in a local soup kitchen or to help rebuild a local homeless women's shelter. Right now we collect donations and goods for the women's shelter and help other, each other to stay connected to various events. A family was recently burned out of their home and we were able to collect enough goods and furniture and other items that they finally had to tell us, okay, stop, we have enough. We don't even know two different pagans on the Hands of the Goddess board on Facebook contacted me to say, hey, there's this family we know. So I don't even know to this day whether that family was pagan or not. All I know is that pagans um, got together to help them. Um, at Yule, we collect, uh, we, for the second time, we collected toiletries for the women's shelter. Some people actually mailed their donations from across the state. At our festivals, two of the largest Sabbaths we celebrate through the year are Beltane and Samhain, which are 
in May and October, almost everyone puts in volunteer hours in order to make the events happen. So yes, service is a large component of what Pagans are all about. And so is taking responsibility for our own actions. There is no devil to blame our mistakes or bad choices on. As a whole, Pagans feel as though each of our souls is on a kind of a spiral dance, evolving to a higher plane or higher vibration through a succession of experiences, choices, and lifetimes. But that topic, like so many other sub subjects I've touched on today, really requires a much longer discussion. Do I cast spells? Yes. Yes, I most certainly do. But even in spellcrafting, each witch uses various tools and thought processes. Do you suppose that each, if each of us in this room was tasked with making chocolate chip cookies, that we'd all make them exactly the same? I don't think so. I like toffee in mine. Maybe you like butterscotch. Maybe you like peanut butter. <laughs> I don't know. Intention and imagination. Those are two very powerful tools. The law of attraction plays a very big role in what I do, including the spells I cast. When I first started casting spells, I used quite a few tools because it made me feel more comfortable, as if I was more likely to do things right if I used tools and implements. Now I use very few, if any, because I don't need them to feel comfortable or successful. Still, I will tell you that wearing a cloak to a public gathering or using an anthem to cast a circle can help you to set the stage, perhaps very much the same way as putting an apron on to make those chocolate chip cookies I mentioned, or putting on a certain kind of music to wash your car, because you feel better, it makes you feel good. For me, so do I will it, so mote it be, powerful words to create what shall be. Combined with my focused intention, tends to be enough. And now, even though I have much more I would love to say, my time with you has come to an end. So I'd like to thank you for, me, for inviting me to join you today.